Hi there, welcome to this first tutorial. In the course web page, you're going to find now this link to tutorials. And here we, we, we have all, all the tutorials. So we are going to update it, let's say maybe in a weekly basis, but let's work in the first tutorial. Okay, this is a basic one, a 2D pipe, okay? So here you have the files, okay? So you can click here to download the files. So have in mind that all the files are compatible only with the 2021 version of Fluin and ANSYS Workbench. And here we're going, you're going to find the links to the different videos. So this is in YouTube channel. And for this one, you, you, you're going to need the the University of Genoa credential. But here we're going to put everything. So let's talk about the, the first case and what we're going to do. So basically this is what we have a 2D pipe. So here we have the geometry, the fully 3D geometry when imagine that we take it and then we just put it to the uh, cross section. And then also we're going to use symmetry, but also we can model the whole pipe. So we're going to, to do the, the whole workflow, geometry, meshing, I'm going to show you different techniques and then we go to the case setup here we have the the condition so we have this pipe with a length of seven meters a diameter 0 0.1 then we're going to run into regions laminar turbulence here you have the values and we're going to run in compressible and we're going to set these conditions you now fluid properties just density one and in the velocity one from these values you just can compute the viscosity and we're going to do it 2d and 3d okay to show you so in the 3d case we're going to get the in the 2d case we're going to get the finer mesh in the 3d just to show you a little bit more quartz because since it starts to get he heavy but things are going to be exactly the same, okay, the post-processing. And the results that we're going to do to get is something like this. So probably we already saw in the theory, we know this plot that is very famous, very important in this modeling. And this is what we have, okay? So here we have the comparison with the correlations, analytical correlations, okay, that we have a viscous layer, logarithmic low, spalding low, and also a solution coming from another software, okay? I don't know, <laughs> I don't care the physics involves. Remember that we're normalizing everything, so we should be able to get the same profile independently of the, the physics involved, okay? So see that we have all those cases and then the dots correspond to this one. So we see that we have a quite good agreement, the viscous layer, then the buffer, and then the logarithmic region, okay? In this case, see that the oh, overlap region, the logarithmic region is not very wide. Remember that this, the upper limit depends on the, on the, on the Reynolds number, okay? So in this case, likely it is a very large Reynolds number, so that's why you have a very wide region. Here is a little bit more narrow. Then we're going to do some other sampling. So uh, this sampling, by the way, we're doing it in a region where the flow is fully developed. So we take a plot here. So we measure from the wall to the core of the flow. Okay, so you are measuring from the wall to the core of the flow. Okay, so here we do the same, but now we're measuring the the shear stresses. So see that we have laminar shear stresses and turbulent shear stress and the total one. Okay, so again, we have shear stress and position, no? the radial position, let's say. And see that at the wall, what we have, okay, and this is again coming from the theory that we know that at the wall, the viscous stresses are dominant. And see here that in the viscous suit layer, okay, where in the layer where viscous effects are important, the molecular ones see that large effect and then see that the turbulent shear stresses in the viscous layer are very low, non-existent, and then they start to grow until you go into to the core where turbulence effects are dominant. Okay, so this is a very nice plot, a real life. Okay, so in pipes you, you, you get it. it's quite easy to reproduce this one. Okay, so this is these two are source of, of validation. Then we go and we plot here the velocity profile. Okay, again and align normal to the wall. Velo we have the velocity profile here. So see that this is very different from the parabolic profile that we're used to, okay? So we have it here, then the wall shear stresses. Now we plot the wall shear stresses here in this wall, top of bottom, now it's fully symmetric, so it's just whatever. And we put it there. And then we take we can take a look at another tolerance quantity, like torrent dissipation rate or torrent kinetic energy. So see that again we have the Y plus here. So all these plots were done inside Fluent, by the way. So in this first case, I'm going to show you how to do everything inside Fluent. In the 3D case, 
I think it's easier to, to do it outside Fluent. So we're going to show I'm going to show you how to export the files and then in using Python how to do that post processing. But basically, see that what we have here again we have same friendly theory again radial distance from the wall. Well, in the case is the, the case actually is is it's 2D. So you go from the top to the middle and see that you you have here. At the viscous sub layer, you have a, a, you have it here the dissipation load. Then it peaks in a region in the buffer layer. As I mentioned, the buffer layer in turbulent flow is very energetic, and in the buffer layer is where you are going to have all these peaks of dissipation and turbulent kinetic energy. See that again, turbulent kinetic energy peaks somewhere in the buffer layer, like in 20 between 20 and 30. See that you have these peaks and a corresponding peak on dissipation in the viscous layer uh, in the buffer layer, a little bit lower, probably will be about 10. So this is telling that all the turbulence fluctuations that are trying to go to the walls are dissipated okay so there is kind of a, a diffusion or transport so everything that is coming here these fluctuations are heavily dissipated heavily dampened okay and here then you have in the core of the flow you don't dissipate okay this is not dissipated that you have this quantity and then well we have the colors as well remember this is just the 2d case now and we have the symmetry okay so this is symmetry and this is the wall the outlet so all the sampling important is done when the flow is fully developed okay so the, the, this case this pipe we have a lot of validation data so you can look at the friction coefficient velocity profiles also the 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 the, the, the length and strength uh, in terms of you can compute that to know when the flow is fully developed. So there is a lot of data. So all the samples, just to make it clear here, in the 2D case are done here from the top wall to the core of the flow. In 3D case, you just take a radial position, you sample in one point, and remember the sampling is always normal to the wall. So you do it here, normal to the wall. Okay, so this is the case presentation. Now let's move and work in geometry generation, meshing and running the simulation and, and doing the post-processing. Thank you for, for the attention. See you in the next video. Bye.